We're going to jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's work. Every Monday, he puts out an issue of the Tiger Forex Report. You can check it out under the newsletter tab at TFNN. He puts out updates when warranted. He covers all the major currency pairs. He's also covering notes and bonds in there, okay, and so much of what's going on right now. Crude oil, notes and bonds, yield currencies you saw the action yesterday man uh boy we got some action as we gear up for a fed day today teddy cakes that good morning good morning tommy boy uh well let's see if you want to dive in what'd you think of the action yesterday first of all <laughs> on some of the currencies some of the yields the market gave it all back teddy i talked about a little bit in the beginning of the program that the currencies and the notes and bonds did not however give back that entire move so they are kind of trading still on that cpi number but what did you think of the general market reaction yesterday as we come into a fed day today man uh, well, I think it was overdone by the media, for one. You know, I mean, I hear all this inflation's being so slowing down, whatever. It's just the pace of inflation that's slowing down. It's not as radical as it was a year ago. But anyone that thinks inflation is, is slowing, is gone away, is out of their minds. You know, I mean, <laughs> you just have to go to the store for that. You know, I mean, like, that's just not the case. You know, so I think if you look at it, I mean, we had a sell signal in the interest rate market last week, you know, and uh, it's... It got taken out by just a little bit yesterday, and then the, and then the yields came back. You know, yeah. so I think you're going to be flat going into the number, and I find it hard to believe that the market already has priced in the low in the you know in the bonds and the notes from a couple months ago that counts this rate hike this month. Yet alone, we still have another probably a half a point to go sometime between the next one to two meetings next year. So yeah. I don't see how. We these that right now this pullback in yields is going to maintain itself. You know now there's another differential that we have to consider is when it comes to Powell. You know people say like you know is it going to you know we talked about this already back in the spring that by the time we get to 2023 they're not going to be raising three quarters of a point half a point at a time. They're going to have to pull back because otherwise we're going to have 1980s mortgages before 2023 is out. You know as far as pricing. You know so that's not going to happen. But if the other central banks around the world continue to start to raise rates, the question is, is, is the Fed going to do that in tandem to keep their position? Yeah. You know what I mean? So because otherwise we start to lose everything they tried to do by raising rates in the first place. You know, so I think that's something we have to listen to the speak. So I would expect that, yeah, that, you know, that the Fed is going to start to retreat in how hawkish they are. But I think if the ECB, you know, and the BOE and especially, you know, some of the other central banks continue to raise, especially if they're hawkish at a half a point or a three quarter rate, it's doubtful that the Fed is just going to stop raising rates. You know, Man. so I mean, and it's yeah. not about protecting the dollar. It's about protecting what they've done over the past six months, especially, you know. I, it's some great points, man, and it's it's. I've learned so much just talking to you in terms of how they're all related. And it's inter it is interesting how we got so far ahead of everybody else. Where our Federal Reserve hiking interest rates, you saw so much dollar mm -hmm. strength, um, and yeah, now the euro's coming to the party. What do we have? Do we have an ECB meeting going on this week as well with fifty basis points? Is that what's going on? Well, the so. question is, is what are they going to do? You know, I mean, you got to remember with ECB has been on this quantitative easing thing for so long. They're reversing gears and that goes against the total narrative. You know, I think that right now, if anything, they're doing more of it as a currency protectionist strategy than they okay. are because they wanted to, to fight inflation. You know, and here's the other yeah. thing, too, is that we have this problem that let's say the Fed stops raising rates. Let's just say that they come out and say, yeah, we're done. We, we, we've got inflation under control. Well, what happens to the dollar? All of a sudden, Oof. the dollar is going to crash, which yeah. means that we're going to have inflation just because all the cost of the goods from, from our imports are going to go skyrocketing. You know, so we're point. not going to be we're not going to um, be staving off inflation by them just stopping raising rates. They have to keep this edge against the rest of the world saying, you know, look out at any point. We may just raise a half a point or three quarters again, you know. Yeah. So and, and, and that's a question is, is what Powell is going to do. You know, the transparency with this Fed to some degree has been very good. You know, I do like them in some respects, but then in other respects, they've been very non-transparent. You know, so, I mean, we'll have to see what he does, what the speak is after the meeting. But we're in a we're in a tricky situation where if you're going to go with the talking heads and the mainstream media, well, then you're looking at everything that they've done for the past six months eroding within two quarters to three quarters. You know, yeah. And, and 
So I was just going to mention the dollar, man. It's pretty remarkable, the dollar, when you talk about mm. the give back as to we are almost at prices in the dollar, really, that we were trading at in April, which is right. mind blowing when you think about where we are right now yeah. with the Fed, right? As in the mm -hmm. Fed is the Fed basically, yeah, we might get 50 today, folks, but they're on the 75 path right now. They're on a consecutive, mm -hmm. what, four consecutive 75 paths, and we have the dollar index back to where it was in April. So sometimes right. it gets a little ahead of that time, but right. boy, man, there's so much and up in the And then we have the oil and gold equation that's going to come into, into play also because, and also the yuan. If you, if you look at the Chinese yuan and the Hong Kong dollar in the past two months, how, they, how the dollar is lost against that current, those two currencies especially, you can see that how this, this whole Chinese, you know, yuan for oil deal with Iran and also some yes. other things are actually, they were already planning this a couple months ago. They, this, the news finally came out for what they're doing. This is an attack on the dollar. So if the Fed does just not, I mean, they're not going to get dovish, but if they stop raising interest rates while the other central banks are raising interest rates, and if oil starts to trade in gold for Russia, and then also if Iran has the deal, you know what I mean? Like these are things yes. that th those currencies, all of a sudden, the value of the dollar could just get destroyed, you know? So, I mean, and that's not a good thing. You know, then we're no. looking at. You know, then we're looking at the euro back up at like 125, 130, you know, the pound back up at 150, you know, the yen back down at like 105, you know, and think because the yen, that, that the yen and the interest rate differential won't matter with the yen anymore, you know, because if, if, if the Japanese continue to buy their oil from Russia and trade with these other countries, you know, which why wouldn't they? You know, I mean, the sanctions on, on the Ukraine are destroying Europe, and now they're going to start to have some really bad impacts on us, too, in the U.S. dollar. So we're in a very touchy situation, you know. So, you, and I would be You're getting very the gold bugs there. out there a little excited, Teddy, with the way you're talking oh. about the yen, I think, um, because, boy, those are some big prices, man. Do you, do you have any take on what, and I know you're not really, you know, a hardcore gold trader, but do you, do you look at the gold market, what you see there? Because, boy, I if do. you get the dollar I yen do. driving that I type do, of action, right? I mean, those cycle. currencies. You Sorry, know, especially for long term cycles, because if you look at the ebb and flow, you have the gold market that goes like this, the interest rate markets like this and the equity markets. So those three things go in, in not in tandem, but you have to watch the waves of when the trends really change because they absolutely do influence each other. You know, yeah. and if you have gold and oil, remember. Oil is a, is, a, is a function of certain currency pricing. Gold is a function of currency pricing, you know? Definitely. I mean, the, people, when they take on certain positions, you know, I always tell people, depending on what market you're trading, you may be trading one market, but you're synthetically trading another one. You know, there's a lot of trades that you're synthetically trading gold. Or if you're buying gold in certain currencies, you're trading currencies, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, these things are all interrelated, and I think we're gonna see some very big moves in those markets, you know, or God forbid we do, you know, what happens if oil starts to really out. surge, gold surges. So. Well, I appreciate the education. I've learned so much just talking to you, Teddy, about those relationships, gold, crude, currencies, man. Uh, I appreciate Thanks. it, Teddy. We'll talk to you next week, man. Sounds good. Okay, man. Have a great one. Folks, have a great check day. out the Tiger Forex report. You heard it right there. We'll be right back to finish up the program.